This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be learning about a very cool feature that we have in Python called chain map. And to use it, we need to import it from the collections module. So from collections, import chain map. And practically what it does is combine dictionaries without replacing any values or overriding any values. For example, here we're going to have a dictionary called D1 of type dictionary, and that's going to be of type string to integer, which means we're going to have values such as these ones, A1 and B2. Now let's duplicate that and create a dictionary called D2, which will contain B3 and C4. Now, usually when you combine dictionaries, any keys that repeat are replaced by the next occurrence. For example, B2 is going to be replaced by B3 which means when we actually combine D1 and D2 using the union operator, what we're going to get as an output is A1, B3, and C4, because dictionaries cannot contain duplicate keys. But now imagine you want to create a combined dictionary that does contain duplicates. And I'm going to be explaining more on why you would want to do that in Python. But for now, just imagine that you do want to maintain the duplicates. Well, to do that, we're going to create something called chain map, which I'm going to abbreviate to CM. And that just stands for chain map. So chain map of type string to integer is going to equal chain map with the arguments being set to D1 and D2. And you can insert as many dictionaries as you want here. You just need to make sure that you separate it by a comma. So if you have a third dictionary, you can insert it like this. Right now, we're just going to print this dictionary or this chain map to show you what it actually looks like. And when we run it, you're going to notice that we're going to have this chain map object that contains the first dictionary and the second dictionary. And essentially what this does is treat both of these dictionaries as one, as a combined dictionary. But this time we have the repeating keys. But the first thing that's worth noting is that Every time you try to access a repeating key, you're only going to get the first key back or the value of the first key back. It's never going to search for the second repeating key. Also, any operations you perform on the chain map, such as popping the value of, let's say, B, this is only going to be applied to the first element in the chain map. So D1 is going to be affected while D2 is not. As you can see, when we run this, we're going to have the first dictionary without B, but the second dictionary will still contain B. Also, any changes we bring to the chain map will be reflected on the original dictionaries. All we're doing here is chaining these dictionaries together. So the references to the original ones are still being used. Now, something really cool we can do with chain map is apply an empty dictionary as the first argument, making it so that we can actually update this dictionary without affecting the original values. So now we can do something such as cm at the index of y equals, let's say, minus one, and cm at the index of z will just equal zero. Now, when we print cm or our chain map, what we're going to get is this output, a dictionary populated with the items that we've inserted and the other two dictionaries that we started out with. And once again, it's only possible to modify the first element in the chain map. So we don't have to worry about accidentally removing or adding values to these other two dictionaries. I mean, if we were to type in cm.pop and pop the value of A or the key of A, Python is not going to be able to find that key because the key was not found in the first mapping A. And the first mapping just refers to what we created here, this part right here. And there's something else I actually want to show you, and that is that we can actually create chain maps using a constructor, the chain map constructor. And to do so, I'm going to create this chain map, which will be of type chain map, and it's going to contain the type of string to none. If you guys are confused about what this is, this is a type annotation, just telling Python that this is of type chain map and that the dictionary values contain a string as a key and none as the value. And that's going to equal chain map dot from keys. And inside here, we can insert our iterable. So I'm actually supposed to have a list called names, which I'll just create right here. Names of list of type string, which will equal Bob and Sandra. And then we're going to set the default value for each one of these keys to none. That's why I inserted none here. If you want it to be an integer value, you can add zero here, but you just need to remember to set this to an integer. Otherwise your code editor 
or your static type checker is going to be unhappy. Now, when we print this, what we should have is a chain map with these values. Also, one quick thing I want to mention is that you can practically use all the methods that come with dictionaries on your chain maps, such as the update method. Here we can update our dictionary or our chain map with a value called Luigi or a key called Luigi with the value of none. So that the next time we print our chain map, you'll notice that we will have Luigi inside of it. And I imagine by this point, you're kind of tired of the theory of chain map. So let me give you a quick example of where this could be very useful. And to demonstrate that, we're going to create a variable called default settings, which will be of type dictionary of string to string or Boolean. And that's going to equal the following dictionary. So first inside here, we're going to create a theme, which will be set to light. Then we're going to have a language, which will be set to English and the notifications will be set to true. These will just be the default settings for our application. But something we want our application to have is the possibility to provide our own user preferences, because maybe the user is going to prefer to use a dark theme, or maybe the user doesn't even want to see any notifications. So we're going to create something called user preferences, which will be of type dictionary of string, string and Boolean. It's going to copy the same signature as the default settings. Now inside here, imagine the user only provides a theme, which will be set to dark, and the notifications, which will be set to false. Imagine that these are the only preferences that the user provides. And as you might have noticed, user preferences is missing the language because the user decided not to provide that. So if the user doesn't actually provide their language or their choice of language, it would be good to fall back on a default. So what we're going to do next is create a chain map that allows us to combine these preferences. So here we're going to create something called preferences of type dictionary, or it's not actually a dictionary, it's a chain map object, which contains string to string or Boolean. And that's going to equal a chain map of the user preferences and the default settings. Now watch what happens when we print these preferences. What you're going to notice is a chain map object that contains the two dictionaries. And once again, it contains duplicates. So for theme, we have both dark and light. Then we only have one key that's named language. And for notifications, we have false and true. Now the first dictionary is mapped to the user preferences, which means when we perform a lookup, it's going to grab the values from here first. Otherwise, if we don't specify a value in our user preferences, it's going to move on to the default settings because that is the second element in our chain map. So right now we can print preferences at the index of language. And that's going to give us English, which comes from the second mapping. Otherwise, if we search for a theme, we're going to get dark back because that was found in the first mapping. So as you can see, this was quite useful for falling back on default values. Because every time we try to access a key which did not exist in our first dictionary, it was able to continue searching for that key in the other dictionaries. Anyway, Previously, I told you that we can only update and access the keys and the values from the first mapping. But what if you actually want to change a different mapping inside the chain map? Well, this actually is possible using one of the attributes provided by the chain map. And to show you how it works, I'm just going to paste in the example I had from earlier that contained two dictionaries. Now here we can create another simple chain map. So chain map of type string to integer. It's going to equal a chain map with both A and B, or not A and B, but D1 and D2. Now to actually work with dictionaries on an index level, we're going to have to refer to cm.maps. Then we can do things such as append new dictionaries. So here we can type in Y5 and Z6. So that the next time we actually run this, what we're going to see is an entirely new mapping inside our chain map. And this did not affect the first mapping because without the dot maps option, dot append is only going to apply this to the first mapping, or I guess we need to do update. And you'll see that we will only have two mappings here with the first one being updated by our operation. So again, with dot maps, we're able to do this on an index level. And when I say index level, I just mean that we're actually affecting the list inside the chain map. As you could see, we were able to add this at the index of two using the append method. And if you want to work on a specific dictionary inside the chain map, you can also do the following. 
cm.maps at the index of one. That will make it so we're actually working on this section here. Now we can do something such as update and add a value of let's say Q 20 so that the next time we run this, nothing's going to happen because as always, I did not print the result. But once we do print that result, we should have Q inside that mapping. And finally, it's time we cover some of the special methods and attributes that come with chain map. And for this example, I'm going to add a third dictionary, which will contain D and E with five and six as the values. Then as always, we're going to create that chain map. So CM of type chain map that contains a string to integer key and value pair. And that's going to equal the chain map with D1, D2 and D3. And this part is actually quite fun because when you create a chain map, what you're actually doing is creating a child and some parents. So with the chain map, we can refer to the parents as an attribute. And when we print it, it's going to print everything past the index of zero because whatever is at the index of zero or whatever is the first mapping is considered the child. Everything else is considered the parents. So if you want to refer to the parents, you just type in dot parents and that will retrieve those mappings. And if we were to run this without dot parents, you'll notice that we're going to have three mappings inside here. Once again, this is the child and the rest are the parents. But what if you want to create a new child? Well, to do so, we're going to create cm equals cm dot new child because this method returns a new chain map. So we need to reassign it to the variable that we want to use. And inside here, we can say that the new child will have these key value pairs. So AA will equal one and BB is going to equal two. Now, if we were to print this, what you're going to notice is that we're going to have a new child mapping, which is the first mapping in the chain map. And this is the only one we can update and remove elements from, or at least when we are referring to our chain map directly. So dot pop, if we pass in AA, this will only affect the first chain map and not the others. And if we type in cm.parents, you'll notice that we will have some new parents here. And let's actually make it so you can see the old parents. And now when we run this, you should see that previously we only had these two as the parents. But as soon as we added a new child, A and B became new parents. Anyway, as you can see, chain map has a lot to offer in Python. And I literally learned about it just the other day to think that still after three years, I'm learning new things every day from the documentation, which is actually quite exciting. But yeah, that just about sums up everything I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below what you think about all this or whether you have any other questions regarding chain maps. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.